the most surprising thing about this evening? I thought Weakest Link was dead! <laughs> Hello, this is J.E. Realize. Now, I was originally going to start off with a different intro. The original pick I was going to do was the whole We're losing the Monday Night War sort of thing, but you know, that's cheesy and people have already moved on to the Wednesday Night Wars. But yeah, the numbers are not doing great. As I said, the first show didn't even reach 3 million viewers. The second show couldn't break 2. That is just not good. And I think this is kind of NBC's fault. They've been changing the formula. And even though I don't talk about the ratings for the next day because I record these the night of, despite the fact that these videos basically go up after the ratings get revealed, I have a sneaking suspicion that this won't break 1.5. And NBC is certainly not helping matters. They've changed up the formula again, thinking that's what they need to do. The problem is they've been going about in the opposite direction. They decided to reveal the jury rankings of all the songs performing on the same night. And it isn't even a deal of revealing them at the end of the show. Even that would be... Mm, but it wouldn't be... Mm. They decided to reveal the placement of all the acts based on all the acts that have already performed so far. So it would be continually updating after each performance. NBC, you don't get it! The magic is in the mystery! People are going to see this. This is a spoiler! You don't reveal spoilers! You have Paul Heyman on your staff. Paul Heyman's working with WWE, who's working with Peacock, who's working with NBC. He should tell you a thing or two about spoilers! I know a thing or two about spoilers! I remember Melody Festival in 2018, when one of the favorites by the public got shot down by the jury, and everyone saw that he got shot down by the jury, people stopped voting for him, and he got dead last in the final. Granted, this isn't Melo de Festivalen, but it's run by the same guys who do Melo de Festivalen. I know you need to find a way to pump the numbers somehow, but this is not the way to do it. This is only going to pump the numbers down. People are going to vote differently now because you show them the results from the jury. And now another thing that grinds my gears. The announcement of the qualifiers from show two. Okay, first we got a voice winner. Now that's just nepotism. Now you could say it's not, but there's really no evidence for either side, so I can't be disproven here. It would just make sense though, right? And NBC did that mistake of revealing the jurors, so yeah, the onus is on them. But all that aside, who do we have joining Jordan Smith? Well, we have North Dakota, Chloe Fredericks. Honestly, it's not the worst song. It's a pretty good song. It's just I didn't expect it, really. Next up was Kansas. That was a ballin' song. I approve. But then the last entry to qualify was Montana. That is what really fumed me. You sent the lowest common denominator uninspired pop country tripe to the final rather than some authentic folk music I got most of it out of my system, but when I get to go, I get raring to go. This is just sad. And I know what you're thinking about the whole wild card thing. I promote the whole wild card thing, but that's not going to help Maine out in this case. The people are going to go for the most viral entries, not necessarily the best entries. They're going to go for Nupu Goofin and Nupu. Who knows what else? I'm not gonna bother with Get Out Alive. So yeah, main, you're you're done for. It's it's upsetting, but what are you gonna do? But let's move on to 
another song that I have high hopes for and wish the judges wouldn't crush. And that would be Texas by Grant Kanaki and the song Mr. Independent. As a Californian, it kills me because I'm a Californian. That goes without saying. But dang this song. When I heard the snippets for this song, I had really high hopes for it. It's got that bit of mid-2000 stuff in there that just, you know, I like the mid-2000 stuff. If you don't know, well, now you know. And it just had this unique energy that other songs weren't bringing in. And I also just noticed it's pretty much inspired by Billie Eilish. Which, if your song is inspired by Billie Eilish, that's different from being a knockoff of a Billie Eilish song. I gotta say, though, this is a bop, and God help me if this song also gets KO'd by the juries and the 50-50 vote. Yeah, I'm in that mood. <laughs> That's a reference. <laughs> Not quite one for one, the lyrics, but, you know. Also, to mention before I move on, he's one of what I would like to call the TikTok trio. Now, there are participants from three states that appeared in the same TikTok video, and they've been doing TikTok videos with each other. And I find that rather adorable. Not in a demeaning sense, but more of an endearing sense. You know, I like camaraderie. I like when people join together to make something greater. And we'll get into the next two pretty soon, actually. It's like not even halfway into the hour and we will have done both of these entries. But Texas is one of them. I have high hopes for him. Next up is Louisiana. I didn't have anything written beforehand because while the song is really good, it, it just, I don't know what to say about it. I've listened to the song, compared it to all the other songs I listened to from the show, and it's pretty good. Luckily, I'll have time to make the ranking and think this over. It's a good song. It's got that grunge rock with Blackbird overtones, you know, Blackbird, the Finnish entry by Norma John. I don't know how else to describe it. Next up is Tennessee and Tyler Braden with the song 17. And when I first heard the snippet of this song, in fact, I think he is the first person to reveal snippets of his song. And I listened to that song and I didn't have very high expectations. I'm not a country guy. I had a country phase. I got over it. It was a phase. Like all things are. But no. Jonah Prill was far worse than this. This song, when I listened to the full thing and saw the performance, it's actually pretty solid. It's an authentic country song. The kind you would put on the top 40 lists. It's good. Tyler Braden, I had my doubts, but you know what? They're fine. I don't think you outrank Texas, but you may be top five. Next up is New Jersey, which is also part of the TikTok trio. Brooke Alex with the song, I Don't Take Pictures Anymore. First off, I gotta say that this whole thing reminds me a bit of Bailey. But before I get into that, Brooke Alex was basically one of the first entries I've taken interest in before I even knew what they were sending. It's like, she's there, I heard a little bit, I think she might do well. And then she kind of went an unexpected route. I don't know how else to say it. Back to the Bailey metaphor. You know how Bailey is, like carefree, easygoing, funny, nice to kids, and you know, all around having a fun time. And then she cuts her hair and tears up the Bailey Buddies, the wacky wavy uh, army inflatable tube man. I don't remember how it goes. Please don't come at me, high school algebra teacher. And while she's gotten really aggressive and nasty and hates kids now, and also her previous self, you still kind of care for her, despite her having a rather uninspiring women's championship run. That's basically where I am with Brooke Alex. I don't know whether I really like this song or only somewhat like the song. I'll get into that once I make my voting. 
And next up is another TikTok trio, except these guys are a duo, so that would make it a quadro. I would love a quadro. I would love it so much. The graphics card, I mean. And it's Nico. No, not that Nico. Not that Nico either, I think. We got our first duet in the American Song Contest. And you know what? It's actually not bad for a duet. Like, it's up there with Waterfall, I think, when it comes to, like, good uh, duet songs. But duets, as we know in Eurovision, they don't really have the best success. The last time I remember there being a duet that had big success in Eurovision was Salvador and Luisa Sobral back in 2017, the singer-songwriter duo. And before that, there's Ellen Nikki, but we don't talk about Ellen Nikki. Next up is Florida. Well, someone had to sing Spanglish on the show. And it's not going to be our territorial entry, because even though our territorial entry was once held by the Spanish, there's basically no Spanish presence there whatsoever. But yeah, Florida. I don't know what to say about this song. First off, it kind of gives me Mandinga vibes, you know, from Romania 2012. It gives you that sort of vibe. You know, you got the festival music in the background. Not like really electronic heavy, no more like traditional festive party music. And you got the English and Spanish mix up. It's a real nice callback. I wouldn't say it's in my top 10 or even my top 15 yet. But I got no complaints. But then we go into Alaska. Oh, goodness sake, Alaska. On the surface, it's not a bad song until you think about it. Now, Jewel sent in a song called The Story and warned us ahead of time this is about stories and plot twists and all that sort of stuff. And she just leans into the gimmick. You can tell by the lyrics that this is a gimmick and I frankly don't like it. It's too heavy-handed for me. It otherwise sounds like a mid-2000s Eurovision song. And I've said things about mid-2000s songs, but you gotta understand, mid-2000s Eurovision is a lot different from mid-2000s American pop music scene. And she's no Carola, so I'm gonna pass on this one. It's probably one of my least favorites of the night. Which is a bit of a shame, because so far, Michael Bolton has impressed me. He's qualified. Macy Gray has not impressed me. It's an okay song, but... Nah. Jewel, look how far we've fallen. Nothing against Jewel, though. It's just, just... I can't get into it. Next up is South Carolina. And I really don't have anything written for South Carolina. Or South Dakota, for that matter, except in the case of South Dakota, they have a discount Sergei Lazarev on the stage. Now you can't unsee it. South Carolina is just an okay hip-hop beat. It didn't really wow me. It was just there. South Dakota had a pretty decent rock beat. It also didn't wow me. This is not a good sign. Next up, we got Delaware, and when I listened to the full song, one thing popped into my head, and it's Infinity Train. People are gonna use this for Infinity Train A and B's, and it's all perfect, because there's even a lyric that says, I met a girl who isn't me. Lake anyone? Uh, I know, I'm not supposed to be talking as much about things that are not ASC or the ESC, but I just couldn't help myself bring it up. It just, it just really hits you when you know. You just know. The staging was energetic. I mean, the song and the presentation were pretty solid energy-wise. Most other things were kind of questionable, but the energy, wow. And also, she's in the front running for the Barbara Dex America Awards with that conductor's outfit. There's really no other way I can say it. It's like, there you go, you're in the running. It's like, please make a Barbara Dex America Awards. If you won't, I will. I'll personally fund the website. Granted, I'll need to get a job, so in the meantime, I'll have to ask other people if they can help me fund the website. But you get the point. Barbara Dex America Awards, 
needs to happen. Wow, we're down to two entries now. Okay, time flies when you don't have much to talk about the entries. Okay, so Northern Mariana Islands, or as the ASC calls them, Northern Marianas, because let's be realistic, there was a character limit. And I got a few things to say about this entrant, because it isn't much, but what it is is pretty laid back. It's like it gives you this soothing atmosphere. It isn't really like Michael Bolton or Jocelyn or anything like that in which they would soothe you and empower you and embolden you. No, this is just like a beach lounge song. No, 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 no. This is the sort of song that would be played by street performers when you walk down a strip mall. You would listen to that song, everyone would be crowded around, they would give the guys change, you know, it's not bad. It's not going to advance by any stretch of the imagination. It may not even make my top 20. But it's not offensive. And it's more than just, I can't really say anything about it. It's pretty quality. And now we move on to the last entrant. And it's Riker Lynch from Colorado. Okay. I'm not pleased about the idea that this is going to be the default summer bop hit sort of thing. It's an alright pop hit song, but it's not really like standout. It's not like the kind of song that you would listen to often on the radio or would empower you. It's more of a failure of a call to action rather than a call to action. I mean, it's not a bad song. I say that all the time, it's not a bad song. In this case, it's just a case of I'm not really being moved or encouraged or empowered by it. Plus, that guy has cool dad energy. That's an oxymoron. Dads are not cool. Okay, with all those entries done, let's move on to the jury qualifier. And I basically tried to stay away from the shoddy take that NBC thought would save the contest, which is, oh, let's reveal everyone the jury ranking. Except for, at the very end, we'll basically have the entire jury ranking except for one, which we still need to determine. Oh, my goodness sake, it's like NBC, you don't get it. But yeah, Riker Lynch, yeah, was in the running. The winner is Tennessee. I'm not as ticked off about Tennessee making it through the jury round as much as I was with Kentucky. I'm still rather disappointed that they overlooked Texas, though. Texas is a damn bop, and you can't change my mind, okay? Also, one more thing I forgot to mention about Texas. You're from Texas. Don't you remember the blizzard? I mean, Puerto Rico talked about the hurricane that ravaged his homelands. You couldn't have brought up the blizzard that... Oh, he lives in California? I am torn about how to feel about this guy now. Really? I mean, I know people move over to California to try to get themselves a music career. But you just sold out. Like, what are the Texans gonna think of you? Like, the Texans in his hometown seem fine, but... I would never think of betraying my home state like that. But then again, I'm lucky. I can always drive down to Los Angeles. It would just take four hours and I wouldn't leave the state I'm in. But enough about these rants. We need to come to terms with the serious possibility that ASC is not going to get a season two. And I believe this is a symptom of a systemic problem. Singing shows aren't gaining the numbers that they used to. Look at Eurovision, they used to be on top of the world with over 200 million views, and then eventually they lost those views. Many times they were able to regain that, but recently, especially after Russia got kicked out in 2017, I'm seriously trying not to make this political, the numbers went down and they haven't fully recovered. So Eurovision was emphasizing, oh, we're a hit with the young crowd. I am mixed on that, because if you're going to pander to the least common denominator, what is Eurovision going to become? Plus, you have the issue of singing shows in general. I was the one, okay? I am willing to stand by my statements. I said that 
Eurovision and American Song Contest would have a place here in America because they're not your standard singing show. But it turns out that that is not really the case. But I don't really think it's because the American Song Contest isn't a unique and innovative concept. Really, I think the problem is they came in way too late in the game. Stuff like American Idol, The Voice, Masked Singer, they got years on their back and people know their names. American Song Contest is an upstart, but they haven't managed to put themselves out there. Maybe if NBC held on to the product for a couple of years, people would pay attention, take notice, and start watching the show. And I could finally be proven right. But... I'm not sure what is going on right now. I think the standard singing show is dying out. I mean, Eurovision is trying to evolve. It just can't. Many countries are leaving or have been kicked out. And a lot of countries say they want to come back, but they don't have the money or wouldn't know where to put the show on their lineup. The OTI Festival died over 20 years ago. People have been trying to make it come back, the most recent attempt being Ispavision. But given Latin America's infrastructure and the fact that the OTI Festival basically ended because they were way too opaque, you need to balance things out, okay? I'm not sure if that'll work out either. And then you got the naysayers, the people who are saying that Eurovision is doomed, that it's being gutted by Americanization, and that it isn't quite what it used to be. You're right, it isn't quite what it used to be, but I don't want to go back to 2008. 2008, despite a few bright moments, was a horrendous year for me. Granted, I watched the show in hindsight, but I don't want late 2000s Eurovision. The product that Eurovision has now is fine by me. But sadly, people are just moving on. Singing shows aren't doing what they used to, and really, the most I can do at this point is to keep showing my support and keep voting. And, of course, watch the Eurovision Song Contest through official channels. But there's only so much I can do. If the world says they don't want Eurovision, or OTI, or the ASC, or even San Remo, San Remo is more an institution than Eurovision. They've relied on their whole small town venue and nurturing of local Italian artists, and they were the predecessor to Eurovision. If that dies out, that would say a lot more than if Eurovision dies out. If Eurovision dies out, people will shrug it off and move on to watching the Olympics and the FIFA World Cup. If they don't get shut down either, I mean, have you heard the corruption allegations? If San Remo dies out, it would be insignificant. But the people who have heard of San Remo and have known its stories would be really depressed to see where the music industry has gone. Do the feedback thing. Like, comment, subscribe, or dislike if I have depressed you. I know I would dislike myself. Follow me on Twitter at J.E. Realize. This has been J.E. Realize. I'll see you next week, and let's hope NBC doesn't cancel the show too early. I still want to hear all the songs. At the very least, we'll still have the music. Thank <laughs> you.